Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Code Central. Today is the last Sunday of the year 2020, which means this is the last video for the year 2020. And I want to take a moment to thank everyone who have been watching my channel, following my channel and subscribe to my channel. And also I wanted to wish everyone happy holidays and happy new year. The next video that I'm going to record is going to be in the first week of January of 2021. Today's video is going to be a short video and in today's video I'm going to talk about the pattern matching enhancements which are done as a part of C Sharp 9. The topics that I'm going to cover today are the changes in type pattern matchings, the introduction of relational pattern matching and the introduction of logical pattern matching. Now without further ado let's start showing each one of those. Currently I created a .NET Core project which is running in .NET Core 3.1. First I'm going to show how some of this feature works or does not work in .NET Core 3.1 which is C Sharp 8 and then I'm going to show how they have changed in C Sharp 9. So first I'm going to demonstrate the type pattern and for type pattern what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few classes. So let's say we have a class person and then we have a class teacher which derives from person and then finally we have a class student which is also derived from person class. Now if we create a function here called is teacher which takes a type person and basically it does a switch on person and based on the switch condition it says if the person is a teacher then it is true and if it is student spelling of the student is incorrect let me correct it so if it is student underscore then it is false and for every other condition it is false now here this underscore is really especially for this case where we are not using the object at all it's really unnecessary it's just ceremonial and if we get rid of this we're going to get red squiggly which is going to show an error but in .NET 5 or C Sharp 9, this is something it's not going to be needed anymore. So here, if we say and we call is teacher and we pass a new teacher, then of course it is going to return true and we get true. Now, if I convert this to .NET 5, now I can get rid of this underscore. It is not needed anymore and we don't get any error. So this is, I think, in terms of functionality, it is not a big deal, but in terms of convenience, this is definitely a very good feature. And if I run, I should get the same response of true as before and I get true. So this is the first thing that I wanted to show. The next thing I wanted to show is the relational pattern. So let's see how the relational pattern works. For relational pattern, let's consider we have a situation where we wanted to find out based on the age of a person, we want to do some sort of calculation. So first let's declare the age of the person here. And let's say age. And here let's create Okay. And let's say based on the age of the person, it is determined what is the 401k contribution. 401k, if you are not aware of, it is a program available in the United States, which is for retirement saving. And based on age, the contributions are different. So let's say and we get the person here. And then we can do 
a switch condition on edge and here what we can do is we can say if the age is greater than 50 then the contribution is I think it's 25,500 I might be wrong and then if it is less than or equal to it's probably greater than or equal to 50 then it's 25,500 and less than 50 it is 19,500 now if we do that we can say So we can pass the percent to contribution and if we run we should be getting 19,500 in the output and we get 19,500. So this is something which is new. This did not exist in .NET 3.1 and it makes life really really simple that we can do it. If I change it to .NET 3.1 you can see that we'll start getting complained by the compiler saying it is not supported. See this feature is not available in Eight. It has to be C sharp nine or greater. Now let me change it back to .NET 5. So this shows the relational pattern. And the last one I wanted to show is conditional pattern. Now conditional pattern comprises of three different types. One is AND, which is conjunctive. Second one is OR, which is disjunctive. And the third one is NOT, which is negated. So if we want to show that, it can be shown really well with some of these conditions. So I can change this and say, if it is less than and greater than 18. I don't remember what is the minimum age of contribution, but I'm just considering that let's say it is 18. Just for the sake of this demonstration, if you know, please leave a comment below, but I'm considering that this is the age of 18. So if it is less than 50 and greater than 18, then return this else this one. So this is the end condition. And here we can say or greater than equal to 50. We could have just said greater than equal to this two. Greater than is not needed, but I'm just showing you just for demonstration purpose that you can use or like this. So this is the condition. And now since we are starting from greater than 18, we can introduce an underscore for rest of the condition and we can say zero. So if we run this, we should get the same 19,500 as response. So in the logical pattern, we covered or and end. The last one is not. And for not, we can use a type because that's where not really works pretty well. And we can just change the implementation here and we can say not student then return true and not teacher then return false. This is just an opposite of the same thing and I can just copy paste this and say is and I can pass new teacher to the function is teacher. I have to get rid of the underscore because it's going to be unreachable since we did not so we don't need the underscore condition and now if i run this i get is teacher is true so this shows how to use the not pattern and as i explained this is a very short video i just wanted to cover the changes in pattern match i think some of these are really handy especially the logical and or condition with the relational pattern is very handy. And also for the type pattern match, the fact that we don't have to pass an underscore or a variable when we don't have to use it is really helpful in terms of the ceremonial code. So this is all I wanted to cover today. Again, thanks everyone for watching my video, subscribing to my channel and following my channel. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have been watching my channel, and you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching this video.